Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Nanam Paramam Dheyam Knowledge is Supreme Let us now see what are the other options which are available with us in case the first principle dynamic model has limitations for the process under consideration. So in that case we go with what is known as an empirical model. So empirical model will be a model which will be developed with the help of experiments. So as we had seen earlier a dynamic model is that which gives you a relationship between inputs and output as a function of time. So while generating an empirical model what is done is that you have a process already built and then you give changes in the inputs which may be a manipulated input or a disturbance input if possible and then capture the response of the output as a function of time. So let us say we have a process. This is manipulated input, this is disturbance input and this is output. So we give some change in the input, let us say we give some step change in the value of input and we try to record what is the value of the output. Let us say because of that change the output did not change for some time and later on started showing some response. So we have how the input changes as a function of time and we have recorded how the output changes as a function of time and then we try to find the function function which is the process model which will convert this input into the output. So we do not need to necessarily know what is inside the process, what kind of equipment is there, what physical laws it follows, all we are interested in giving some change in the input and then record the output and what mathematical function would give me a relationship which says that if a particular input is given to the process, the output which we saw is same as what will be predicted by using this particular model. So there are multiple ways in which this empirical models can be formulated. One is a simple regression model, we have the input, we have data about how the input changed, so these are all the values of ui and then we have the values of all y's which are yi and we can simply do regression which will tell me yi as a function of ui. So the simplest way it can be done as a linear regression or a non-linear regression model. The other way we can capture the response is for a step change of a certain magnitude, let us say this step change was of magnitude 1 that is known as a unit step change, you capture the output at different time instances. So let us say these are the different time instances and you note down for a unit step change in the input what are these coefficients? So we will call it y0, y1, y2 all the way up to yn. So listing those these coefficients will tell me how the system responds for a unit step change. So such kind of a model will be where we tabulate the values of y0, y2 up to yn would be known as a step response model. 
in the early advanced controllers these type of models were used to capture the response of a process so the idea is if there is some input which is given to the process you can always write it down as a summation of multiple steps and then assuming the process to be linear we can just add the responses corresponding to each of the inputs let me explain this phenomenon again so step response model says that if i have a unit step my output will give me a trajectory of this these will be the changes from the original steady state now let us say the input was something of this form so let us say this was the input given to a process and i want to predict what is the output so we can always decompose this particular input sequence as a series of steps so let us say the first step is this way the second step you can say is zero all the way up to this point and then some addition so that the total becomes this and so on so by addition of multiple steps so this can be written as a summation of multiple positive and negative steps and we already know if a unit step is given this is the response so if some magnitude step is given the response so let's say that magnitude was a then the response will be a times y0 y1 all the way up to yn and when we have a summation then the response will be the summation of all the responses for the constituent steps so this way assume so this all is valid assuming a linear process if you assume that a process is linear then any input can be written as a summation of multiple positive and negative steps and then the response can simply be scaled and added together to get the final response and then lastly these empirical models can be as complicated as a artificial neural network type model as well uh, mostly from control point of view uh, we would not go to the level of artificial neural networks but regression models or uh, step response models those are quite commonly used empirical models for control systems so now let us look at how does what are the advantages and limitations of these empirical models and the first advantage is straight forward these were developed as alternatives to the first principle models so especially for the cases uh, where the first principle dynamic models are difficult to arrive at these first principle models will be easier to develop because in a real plant there may be hundreds of process variables but out of those may be few let's say five or six are inputs and correspondingly three four are outputs so in that case we just need to develop individual pair wise relationships between inputs and outputs so which may be significantly lower than the total number of equations which you need to write for a first principle model now let us look at what are the limitations and the major limitation is that Uh, these models heavily depend on how these models were arrived at or what kind of changes which were given to the inputs this is known as excitation of the process so in typical control language what we talk about is 
how do we how much did we excite the process that means how much was the step change given to the input and accordingly the validity of the model is more or less of the same order as the excitation so if while developing the empirical model the changes in the inputs were not significant then when you use the model for prediction that time the predictive capability is also limited so <coughs> these do not extrapolate very well but uh, as i said earlier depending on uh, what is the main requirement is it just the getting the relationship between input and output which captures most of the expected changes in the inputs then empirical model may be better than theoretical model especially if the theoretical model is very difficult to get at or the parameters of that model are difficult to get by and then it takes us to the last type of dynamic model which is sort of a middle ground between the empirical model which are known as black box model and the theoretical models which are known as white box model so these are called as gray box models so here what we do is they are actually a combination of white and black box model so you use parts of both these methodologies so we use some parameters from the first principle model typically it is the form of the input output relationship which we get from the fundamental or first principle modeling and while getting the parameters of the system we use experiments or empirical data so in a way it is a combination of the two methodologies and a very commonly used gray box models for from a control point of view is known as a first order plus date time process so as we start moving into this course we'll be using this particular type of model but at this point let me just tell you what it means so it is a first order plus date time model so here what we do is we assume a form of a function which is kp e raised to minus tds over tau s plus 1 so this model form is assumed and then when we get the data between input and output we use this data to find the three model parameters which are kp tau and td so the distinction between empirical model and a gray box model if it was a empirical model i would have taken all this data and simply fitted either a regression model or a step in response model between these two without considering what sort of form that equation would take in a gray box model we assume a certain form as well and this has the form has physical significance so it is not a completely mathematical uh, function which captures the relationship between input and output there is physical insight into developing that sort of model and then the data is used only to get the parameters of the model so in a way it captures advantages of uh, both the theoretical model uh, white box model as well as the black box model you know, in a sense that it incorporates process knowledge uh, therefore it kind of gives you better extrapolation capabilities and uh, uh, it's also easier to develop than first principle model because uh, here you are uh, using experimental data to kind of arrive at the parameters which are very difficult to get theoretically uh, if we want to look at the limitation it is still an approximation we are assuming a certain form which may not capture the exact reality of the process and also we are using mathematical tools to arrive at the best values of these parameters uh, which uh, may not exactly match the data but uh, within a certain acceptable range it will give you a fit between the input and output so they are still approximation uh, models and they will have certain validity range across which uh, their predictive capabilities are there valid uh, but still if you want to compare with, with the 
uh, black box model and a gray box model. Uh, the gray box model in that case would have much larger or wider applicability than compared to the empirical model. So in a way it sits nicely as a trade off between the accuracy of the model and the ease of developing the model and that way many a times a gray box model is preferred over either a theoretical model or a black box model. So we will take a short break here. Thank you.